let me bring on Miriam. <laughs> so, yep, folks in the chat, this is awesome. Charge on. <laughs> Again, we're being faded. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Talk about tricks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are being faded. <laughs> argument spark <laughs> i really wanted to ask you miriam do you have a favorite like what's your what's your favorite tech stack do you have Ooh. before we you know totally talk about as you can <laughs> as you can gather um i'm more of an anti person so ask me about the ones i don't like okay, okay yeah yeah, yeah, I, yeah no, i also no. have You're ready what do you not like <laughs> so these are super unusual but um I'm going to start with a spicy one once again. Um, I don't know why, but most of the .NET developers I meet tend to be depressed. And I'm like, why? You are so <laughs> interesting and smart. What's going on? And um, a friend of mine tried to explain it because he was like, I can speak for Israel, but not other countries. Uh, the government has a tendency to go all in with .NET. So it's mainly government contracts. So maybe that's why. So that's like the only inkling I have for like one specific country. But once again, I was over in Canada, so I don't know. I don't know, but it was a thing. If you're a .NET developer listening or watching this, reach out to me. Tell me how happy you are. Like, yeah, I, so I Alyssa, have... Alyssa's the, the um, refute to this. She's the happiest well, person I know. <laughs> but I'm still an angular girl at heart. I'm just, you know, entering the .NET community. So if Dabbling. you see a significant decline in my, you know, personality, Maybe so, you should, you know, a year from now, be like, get out of .NET, right? Like, I don't please study. <laughs> I see a comment. I'm not depressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Overland Gamer, it is just Starbucks black coffee that's iced because I was like in a hurry. I usually do espresso and then no sugar and heavy cream. So I, I can smoothly move on to um, modern it. JavaScript frameworks. It's <laughs> not because you can that you should. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about Svelte? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't know. Just throwing curveballs in the chat. I love you all. <laughs> She's ready to transition us into the actual topic, and I appreciate her doing our work for us. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay. So for those who are joining <laughs> or watching the recording and may have missed the panel, Miriam, can you introduce yourself? So, hello, hello. My name is Miriam Gessier, and uh, I'm an unusual person. If you have not seen me from the previous panel, um, I am not a developer. I know it's shocking. Um, I work as a search engine optimization expert, and it's actually a technical job. So mm -hmm. I look at a lot of people's code and I judge it sometimes harshly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm surprised. Sometimes I look at things and I'm like, you left that comment in there to be read. You genuinely thought this. <laughs> would... no, no. Yeah. I've seen some really bad movie quotes. No Star Trek ones, but in, if you ever like in, that, comment, <laughs> in code comment. Yep. Like, yeah, like I had someone go like, uh, what was it? The, I, I just have the French name, but there's this old um, Western movie, like the something and then the ugly or it's like a three part, like the title. La, Le bon, la brute. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if people are Western fans, but like there's this movie and there's just some real not safer were quotes in there about violence the good yeah. the bad the ugly the bad and the ugly. yes thank you, yes Overland. So thank you so, so yes they, they they were very interesting but beyond that they, they, yeah i've discovered a few things like um <laughs> you can apply for a job at a company and your pdf cv will be indexed in the google search results because things mm. happen <laughs> so yeah that, it's but we're not here to talk about this. We're to, to talk about another topic. And I would love it if you could both introduce it because you're the reason I'm here. Aww. So this was a true moment of like kismet. Kismet. Like, I'm not saying it. Kismet. Kismet? I'm saying it all wrong. <laughs> I love that word, but I can't say it. Kismet. 
<laughs> it is. Because we're just like, we, Catherine and I were like, we need to talk about this. And then Miriam came into our lives, like a glowing beacon of amazingness, right? Miriam. <laughs> yes. I mean, I just talked to the DevReach CSC. And it was like, oh my goodness, this aligns exactly yeah. with what we're going to talk about. And so we had to bring you on and we're so grateful that you're here. Um, but we've brought you on to talk about unpacking cognitive biases in tech. <laughs> so mm -hmm. if you could maybe start us off by telling us a little bit about yourself, one of the things that I thought was so interesting was you mentioned you have a degree in sociology. So, so maybe talk a little bit about your background and how that kind of influences the, the approach that you take to your work in tech. Yes. So this is a very, very interesting thing because throughout the years, like I said um, previously, I, I spent a decade um, speaking at dev conferences, but not just dev conferences. And I've even had longtime friends who had no idea I had a diploma in sociology. And then they see some of my, my slides and they're like, wait, so you're educated? I'm like, <laughs> hmm, what a backhanded compliment. Wait, wait. You're educated? <laughs> uh, I've, I've had people also oh, in my it. team. Oh. Yeah, I, I've had people in my team go, talking to this man, you can realize he has a master's degree. And I'm like, I have two and you treat me like crap. Oh. What's, what's special <laughs> here? So the reason why this is important, I mean, it will be more important later on when we talk about it, is that I couldn't understand how humans worked as a young person and I literally went to school to learn. But see, everybody goes in like psychology going, I'm going to figure myself out. I'm going to figure out my mom. No, 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 no. I wanted to know, like, what is this clusterfuck? Like, what's happening? Tell <laughs> what's me going on exactly with the rest of you? <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah, why, like, why, why, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what's the, the hidden manual I didn't get at birth because I'm missing some bits mm. here. <laughs> and it, it led me to find out a lot of things, like a lot about how we do impression management as humans mm. for one another, how we deal with each other and how social interactions go down. Like, what is the pattern? And that's how I stumbled upon cognitive biases because and I, cognitive biases, we're going to talk about this, but did you know that um, suicide is actually a sociological thing? It is not an individual thing. There are trends. If you're above five and you're a man, you're more, more likely to commit suicide. And you would think, well, that kind of makes sense now that I think about it, but nobody really thinks about it. Nobody thinks about the fact that like January is divorce month. It's a thing. It's not just some of us. Yeah, Alyssa, you bypassed it. You survived for now. Mm. See you next January. <laughs> no clue for me. That is also. Know, like, are we past January yet? <laughs> that, but that that is a cognitive bias. I'm not. I'm not going to talk about. But P. T. Barnum was really good about this. Like he could make descriptions. Your horoscope. It's so vague that oh my goodness, it suits you. So <laughs> these are things that like, our brains get really, really interesting. Before we dig too far in, for folks that totally are coming to this blind and have no idea, can you define cognitive bias for us? Uh, absolutely. So I even, just so you know, I'm one of those ADHD people who are over-prepared because I had to learn. So I, I do last minute preparations that are pretty grandiose. So I have a slide deck. If you want to see it, it has rainbows and Ooh. it is just explosive. So you are welcome to show it if you would like. Rainbows. I, I, need to, you. I need to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just let share. It's entirely up to you. The share <laughs> so button. let me see it. Oh, it, oh, there's... I can share some slides, but it's it's demanding things out of me. Just a moment. Oh, and the permissions. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we were yes, yes. sorted out if I hadn't realized you had slides. <laughs> That's on Don't me. worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'm huh, I'm discovering things in my own drive. Okay, so I should see. Oh, you're Did, um, I sounding like oh oh I thought I sounded like Sean Connery. No, it was like me this. and my like Schmidt. Schmidt. <laughs> so am i on oh yet oh my god yes go. oh I got you. my god oh my god so, I, I, I want to make this slides for everything now all of a sudden <laughs> I, I just i it makes my brain happy to make slides i make powerpoints for friends that i love whenever they visit so let's do it 
you you all get a PowerPoint. Enjoy it. <laughs> so we we're really going to talk about some some things though. So code and design bias. How does it really work from my standpoint and in what I've encountered? Because my job is tied to a lot of humanity. Like I see a lot of Google searches. Ooh, I'm like, oh, I'm in, I'm interested. This is genuinely a thing. Okay, let's see. So tangent. But I can usually tell when there's going to be a COVID surge because I notice in the trends that people are wondering why candles smell bad or don't smell like anything. <laughs> yeah. So th th that's why I wanted to talk about these things. Like we always think that it's individual, but it's not. So like I said, hi, my name is Miriam and I have a diploma in sociology. There's a little star there because you're going to see why that's important. So quick <laughs> definition. What is a cognitive bias? Well, it's an unconscious automatic influence on our judgment, on how we make decisions. And it produces errors. But why do we do this? It's a shortcut. So our brains, I wouldn't say it's defective hardware, but it's rather limited. And we have a lot of input from the outside world and we're trying to operate. So we're going to waste some brain power in looking at the sky and seeing shapes and clouds but then our brain goes on oh, no 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 we, we have to take a shortcut on this you have to make a decision i already have a framework in there let's go and the reason why we call it a cognitive bias is that it doesn't really serve us well like it reliably produces reasoning errors and that's why i loved um one of the commenters earlier that was going like developers as they have no cognitive biases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's we're all convinced we're perfect and we're not. And we never address this. Like, I know I'm full of cognitive biases. And sometimes I stop myself and I go, not today, Satan. We're not. This. <laughs> not today. <laughs> Get back. <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> so, the reason why I'm here ultimately is to talk about cognitive bias mitigation. You have to go and try to prevent or at, at least reduce the negative effects of these mm -hmm. things. So how do we go about it when we don't even see them and they're built into us? That's a very interesting thing. And I know that there are a few card games that I love that are available for free. You just need to get... They used to be for free, downloadable, and then... People abuse them, so now they are be behind a gated thing where you have to give your email. But I could recommend um, Stephanie Walters and uh, Laurence Wagner's game. It's like it's been translated in multiple languages, but it's also in English. Fifty-two cognitive biases that you can print out and play and figure out what's going on. Oh, cool! It's lovely. Oh yeah, I, I highly recommend it. I I only have five today because huh? I talk a lot, so we can't cover them all. <laughs> so. I want to talk about one that really impacts um, the community, the curse of knowledge. It's a common issue and nobody seems to stop and think about it. So beyond, you know, having a diploma that's shiny somewhere off in a desk drawer, um, I'm also a trainer. I train developers to understand how I do what I do, how they can optimize their code so it's human friendly, but also bot friendly. So that's important. And one of the key issues is the curse of knowledge and I have to undo it regularly. Let's look into it. If the person you're teaching, that's teaching you, so the trainer can't remember how they got there. <laughs> you are in for some trouble. If you've never had <laughs> someone look at your code and go, but that's easy. And they like physically push you over and fix it for you and go see. And you're like, no, I don't. I don't and you're, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Th this has happened to you both, huh? Uh, the best teachers are like two steps ahead, right? Because they, <laughs> they can meet you where you're at. And, and like, instead of like, you're saying push, you know, push you in your code off the screen and just rewrite it. Instead of that, they meet you in whatever jacked up situation you have written and like help you work your way mentally out of it. So I completely, yeah, this is yeah. truth. Right. <laughs> so like, the issue I presume is that if they can't remember why 
this is the right answer, then it might not be based on sound theory or fact. It might just be a gut feeling, right? Or no? Yeah, and uh, well, the the other issue is they also don't understand where you're coming from because mm -hmm. in their mind there is a right way to do it and they can't really explain it to you. They, there's this condescending approach of um, I can explain it to you, but I can't understand it for you. And it's like, uh-huh. Do, do you feel good about yourself now? Like, is this, is this good? Because it's not helping me learn. <laughs> helping and, me learn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And since I have ADHD, I tell people, listen, there is no right way of doing this. There are just plenty of wrong ways to do this. <laughs> and as long as the job gets done, you don't have to be perfect. It has to make sense to you and be understandable by others as well, because, you know, like it has to work, but this is very, very important. So if you forget how difficult it was, you can't help someone else and you will forget because at, at best, okay, at best, you are not a trainer. At best, you are now an expert in your <laughs> field. You're a senior, okay? And it turns into the imposter syndrome because you're convinced that everybody already knows everything you know and that you're boring and that you have nothing to bring to the table. And this is a bit complicated when you train engineers, for example, and you're like, oh, oh, oh my goodness, they are so, they know so many more things than I do. And then you, you get there and you realize they haven't dared tell you they don't understand and they feel bad and this is why the training session is going wrong. Mm -hmm. If you ever find yourself reading some documentation and you have to like Google three words in one sentence, curse knowledge, this is bad. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important to consider that cognitive bias when you write documentation, when you pitch to conferences, when you're helping others learn. So I have a question for you, Alyssa. Do you think you have that problem? Which problem? Ooh. This problem of teaching people the curse of knowledge, do you think? No. I 100% do yeah. not have this problem. <laughs> I actually, I'm sure this is a trap I'm falling into, but I'm just going to answer you honestly. Are, yes. <laughs> I'm actually kind of willing to side with Alyssa. You are shockingly good at remembering the beginner's mindset. I know that's because problem. I am permanently a beginner. <laughs> <laughs> I have, so, like as soon as Miriam, I completely like, yeah, I'm an expert. Then I will have this problem, but I have yet to master <laughs> anything in life. So, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm like unloading a lot on you. You haven't I, really like gotten the full fire hose yet. So I have questions. <laughs> okay, okay. So unrelated question, but we're dwelling. Well, we're going to do a deep dive into uh, too much information. Are you able to grab your pants with your big toe and the second big toe and like what? shut them up into your hands? My pants? <laughs> yes, or any yeah. item on the floor with your toe. Ta -da. Well, not any item, but with... most items. Most items I could do that. Yeah, most people can't do that. Okay, <laughs> like just letting you know because their big toes aren't flexible enough. <laughs> Yeah, no, I just noticed food. this is an ADHD. Like, <laughs> oh. I can do this. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I actually oh want to hear God. from chat on who of you can do that. So go, go, go for it. I need chat. to know how this relates back. Catherine, can you can you pick up your pants off She's the floor with your toes? I yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Do you feel accomplished now? Are you an expert like us? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, Do you I'm remember how complicated it was? Do I remember what? <laughs> how complicated it was to get started at first? No, I've just been doing it forever. So if yeah, so if you had to teach someone how to do this, you would really need to consider it, or just like simple things, huh? Like using chopsticks. <laughs> how do you explain that to someone? Right. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. as as that's one of those <laughs> yes no but mm. it, it's really a thing if you're going to help someone and you find yourself pushing them to fix the code don't do that yeah try to understand where they are this really really helps mm -hmm. if you are stuck and you're like okay i don't know what to pitch uh ask yourself hey what what do i keep explaining to people what do i keep being asked this is the best way to break the curse of knowledge in my opinion 
If you cannot do that, just go into Google autocomplete and go, why do? And then put in your keyword and figure out all the questions <laughs> about. Humanity will disappoint you and intrigue you. Oh. <laughs> okay, so there's another one. The illusory, I don't know how to pronounce this in English. English is my third language. Can someone rescue me? No, you were right. Illusory. Okay. So the the illusory truth effect. So it's the tendency to believe that a statement is true if it is easier to process or if it has been stated multiple times. And I assume both of you are in the US. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's somebody who lay, who like really leans into that cognitive bias. If you see it enough, it becomes the truth. <laughs> Are we talking about okay, TikTok again? <laughs> <laughs> that could work. Or we're talking about your ex Cheeto and she. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'm real bad with cultural references. So you got to kind of really guide Alyssa to get no, to a point. <laughs> don't worry. It's yeah. just. It's a thing that, like, you keep repeating something, something. so mm. you keep hearing it, like, okay, what is the latest thing that you have heard on TikTok that kind of sounds like it could be true? Oh, gosh. Okay, again. I know. <laughs> There's so many times I would, where I will actually Google something, and I'm like, to find is, out. yeah, be like, is this real? Like, did that really happen? to buy a product recently so that probably falls under it where everyone was talking about this is so great this is perfect you need this for travel and i did buy it whoa I, what is it I was it good i haven't i like it so far i have not traveled with it yet which is my oh. use case um <laughs> but the uh it was the lululemon like um crossbody bag yes. so like everything belt bag yes yes yes, yes. and everyone so, was like you, you need, need it it's so easy this. for getting did, through the yeah. airport this that and the other Wait. it's your perfect i bought it <laughs> Wait, we're gonna we're gonna jump into that because there's another cognitive bias called the bandwagon effect mm -hmm. so we're, we're gonna see very <laughs> soon but <laughs> it it's i think it's a mix of both here but there's another element like the tendency to believe that a statement is true if it's easier to process so sometimes mm -hmm. the truth is complicated but you know you're going to take a shortcut. It sounds easier to process. So let's go. So for example, if you want to talk about inequality, very often people will just give really horrible, but very simplistic statements to explain why poor people deserve to be poor. And they kind of brought it upon themselves because otherwise you would have to look into the whole system, look at right. the big a complex society and like how different processes make sure that you stay at the bottom so it's not that you deserve it but every the deck is stacked against you but you know if it's simpler to understand then we go for it so this is something that you have to be weary of like if you end up with a everybody says so or i see it everywhere this could be happening. So be like Alyssa, Google for your life and maybe don't trust <laughs> just the first result. Okay. Just saying as a pro, just saying. Yeah. I like this question from Fuel, Fuel right? Yeah. So if you're being presented with multiple realities, especially if you have a whole bunch of people that all seem to be saying the same thing, what's your best way of differentiating between what's true, what's not? Do we really, we just need to Google everything? Is, are there gut feelings? You know, what's the... Well, so I'm 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 gonna go back with you uh, as well. Sorry, very French. Uh, on the gut feeling, very often the gut feeling you will try to ignore it in your job. Don't. Mm -hmm. It's some of your experiences speaking to you. That doesn't mean you should follow it blindly, but stop, examine it, and consider it. That's one source. Then looking into different sources, different perspectives. So for example, when I first came to Canada everybody was telling me and online as well there was this like one brand of snow boots that were recommended and they like make my feet completely raw and strip it of its skin so it's mm. not for me but everybody kept saying it was right right so sometimes you may have to jump in and follow the flow and understand hey this isn't for me sometimes you have to understand the perspective of the person or the entity telling you these things. So, for example, in my case, I work a lot with Google and I always ask myself, follow the money. 
what's in it for them? Why are they, for example, pushing Angular? There are reasons. Why were they pushing Ant? There's a reason. There's <laughs> because it is a superior framework that will one day rule the world, obviously. We already, people tried to bait us into yet another React Angular fight, and we resisted, and I'm going to resist it again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm just going to say, like, I, I, I look at both of these frameworks equally, like, you're going to bring me problems <laughs> that I'm going to have to fix. So sometimes I look at it very zen because, you know, consulting, there's money to be made in prolonging the problem. I can help you fix that. <laughs> Fine. Sometimes I'm angry that it hasn't moved on and it's been years. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you're presented multiple realities, always ask yourself, what is the, what is the perspective of the person or the entity? What's in it for them? And where could this kernel of truth or sounding like the truth come from mm. like is it easier to understand than the reality mm? so i see that there's a comment about uh, conspiracies oh boy that is that is one of those things huh? it's very emotional and there's it, conspiracies are always built on a kernel of truth that gets really stretched out into the yonder and you're like how did we get there so you have to consider it like if you want to help people out of conspiracies that's literally deprogramming that's not even like please consider your bias you're further along but <laughs> the biases did to help them get there so as i promised catherine your lululemon crossbody bag oh. <laughs> not even like i bought the per like literally the last couple weeks i bought the purple high smile oh. uh teeth whitening toothpaste and i <laughs> bought the uh, the makeup um, from a really hard to pronounce name. And it was like, we'll find your perfect match with this quiz. Literally took the quiz and I got it and I like put it on. And I was like, apparently I think I'm like a sunbathed goddess because this is really, <laughs> this is really tan. And my husband, I'm not kidding. I made him take the quiz and his shade matched me perfectly. So I was like, you're just going to take all quizzes for Alyssa, like how she thinks of herself from now on. So that's hilarious. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm oh. on that bandwagon too. She's not alone in her gotchas. I, I definitely. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and the the thing about this and that's another thing the confirmation bias but we also look for people who think like us to validate us but i'll i'll just go on attention and say the purple and the blue toothpaste um it's just supposed to be a trick of the light and like play around with like color theory and don't worry 10 <laughs> years ago i bought the blue toothpaste and it did nothing and yeah, <laughs> right there with We're you still, the, the jury's still out i'm still using it every morning we'll see <laughs> It's do you want a temporary change for the day? And it's I know that, that is what it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the bandwagon effect is genuinely this thing where you hear everyone around you talk about it, so you will tend to believe it because there's already other people that have done the investigation to tell you about this and like mm. confirm it, i.e. I kept seeing the boots being mentioned online by people I didn't know, so it was an illusion, of course. But the bandwagon is like when your colleagues are talking about it, when your family is talking about it, and you're like, okay, yeah. I'm going to take a shortcut, like a mental shortcut, and believe them because it's easier. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and this is a huge problem. So you also, once again, have to wonder, do I trust you or do i investigate like do i blindly follow you because you're my boss you're my old mentor you're this you're that or am i going to just politely like look into it so this ties into something else it's called this two-step flow of communication so this is a theory that was developed by um lazarsfeld in um who a long time ago i think it was the 40s something like that or 50s <laughs> in the Ch Chicago University. So they're really famous for sociology, like from that time, vintage theories. But the two-step flow of communication is that we have gatekeepers. We have people we trust that will filter media messages and relay them to us. So figure out who your gatekeepers are in your life. And if you start seeing inconsistencies, maybe reevaluate these things. Or maybe you have to also pinch yourself and go, hey, my gut is telling me that I don't care how many people are saying this is good. Maybe, just maybe, the keto diet is not for me. The caveman <laughs> diet is not for me. Maybe I'm not going to eat raw. No, no. <laughs> yeah. I was once a keto lover, so. 
And <laughs> vegan <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Have you heard of the Liver King? I recommend this YouTube rabbit hole. This oh no, I need to find it. <laughs> tearing off raw liver with his teeth or dehydrating oh, it yeah. and selling it to his followers. Oh, and oh. the secret to the Liver King diet was steroid all along. So all I'm saying is it's not because everyone around you believes this that it is true. Um <laughs> and yeah, I see keto shots. I didn't know this would be such a pop up. <laughs> it's funny. It's fine. It's hilarious. It's one of those. <laughs> and, and I see that we're being offered a brand new product, the Bluetooth Empowered yeah. Toothpaste. Yeah, Bluetooth I like it when, Yeah, I, I like it when things are not even imbued or like, you know, including. The, they're like empowered. Let's go. Yeah. So, so. There's Ooh, another one, authority bias. the authority bias. Mm. So the authority bias, that's why I talked about the two-step flow of communication. We have a tendency to attribute greater accuracy to the opinion of an authority figure. So if he said that must be true. And Alyssa, you're going, no, I trust no one. I see your face. Like, <laughs> no, I'm trying to, I'm like going back through. Well, well, my first question was two steps. Crap. I think I missed the second step of that communication flow and then my other thing was like authorities in my life yeah i'm pretty sure there's quite a few that just have like final like approval process of like, yeah, <laughs> yeah there's quite a few because i have this this problem of being uninformed on all levels of life and so there's just a couple people who are like this is truth and i'm like hey that's truth right like and i, I probably should have less authorities in my life <laughs> <laughs> the thing about well the, i have the opposite problem i have a genuine problem with authority i've been mm -hmm. made to take a few tests and they're like you should be your own boss we just highly recommend it <laughs> and i was like no i can't uh, i've been my own boss for eight years i get it now i get it okay i'm the anti i build myself against things not for <laughs> things. but we have a tendency to believe that and Oh, oh, this emoji never shows up and I don't know why. Okay, let me do it for you. Yeah, so yeah, imagine yeah. big red lips going. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now you know why I have told you I have a diploma in sociology. <laughs> I'm bad or I'm excellent? <laughs> excellent. Excellent. I'm losing it at fuel suggestion here that maybe there are some other people on our team that have a problem with authority. <laughs> Wait, I I did I did not find it. Where it's one of our it? Ed's one of our coworkers. Yeah, Fuel said <laughs> I will just use one word, Ed. Uh, and Ed. I I don't know if Ed. I don't know if Ed has a problem with authority or if Ed is the authority that we are biased to listen to. I don't know which one it is, but I think it's funny either Ed's way. So, yeah. Oh, Wait, Ed is the problem and the solution. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Ed. <laughs> He's not even here to defend himself. Not even here. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> so, ooh, concretely, this is why I started this deck going, hey, I have a diploma in sociology. Why would I start with this? Why? Because most people, and studies have been done on this, most people will not necessarily remember who said what, but if you put someone in a white like lab coat mm -hmm. and have seen trot this. them on stage <laughs> to to say stuff, people will forget who said it and what their credentials are, but they're going to like remember that. So that's how we ended up with a lot of men in white, la like white coats telling us stuff about COVID. And then you look into it and you're like, that's not even a doctor. Wait, so but we should wear white coats when we present on stage is what you're saying. They'll take us more seriously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have an anecdote about this. You do? Um, I was invited a few months back to do a podcast on stage live with uh, a, a team that in my industry is a big deal. So it was a Google team, not Angular, but it, it was it was a big deal. It's seen as a I have arrived type of moment. OK, and they were like, what do you need on stage? What do you need a prop? Do you need anything to feel comfortable? I'm like, get me a clipboard. And they have searched for <laughs> four weeks because apparently clipboards are really hard to find nowadays. But I felt really confident walking on stage with a clipboard that had papers that literally had nothing on them. 
but I looked <laughs> it together. And when I explained to the team why I wanted a clipboard, someone else was like, well, actually, I do have anxiety on stage as well. I would like a clipboard. So we <laughs> all got clipboards. We all got clipboards. Oh, my God. That's fantastic. I'm serious. Oh and <laughs> you can walk in anywhere with a clipboard, like just looking at people and I've done it and it really works. Alternatively, if you are a gentleman, you need another buddy with you and a ladder and you will be able to do the same thing. A ladder? If, yeah, yeah, they'll you let you go where you need to go. Oh, to be yes. to be there. oh, I see what you're saying. It's that thing where I tell my sister all the time when we're trying to pull off illegal things and I said, just act like you belong and she's like okay <laughs> <laughs> but if impressive. you have a I, I i do too but i realize we're live so i think we'll wait because <laughs> Alyssa... it's true it's responsible don't <laughs> so don't say anything in this recorded video be <laughs> no like you break into a party right like a private <laughs> party and you I'm like just act like you belong who's gonna question it it's like the guy with the ladder right obviously I belong I have a ladder what are you gonna do oh, well that's the <laughs> point you are no authority at whatever you do so if you come in and you say something's broken they will believe you so I know this sounds really odd but this is me applying it to every day but if you have someone that once upon a time contributed something good like 10, 15 years ago to the community and then they come around and they're like, I believe this should be done. And you're like, have you noticed all the evolutions like these past two, three years? Because clearly what you're saying is wrong. And then like you try to highlight that is this is wrong and people around you will go, yeah, but he knows what he's talking about. And you're like, maybe, right, but has, yeah. not this thing. Yep. Right. So you will have people that come from left field with some authority that is not even related to the topic. And yet you will attribute greater importance to what they say because they are an authority. So that's saying this is a thing. Do not be afraid. Yeah. Well, actually be afraid to challenge it because people are resistant. But you should not gaslight your own self into believing something. Like, do take the time to check it out. Just mm -hmm. because so-and-so said this doesn't mean it's right. Mm -hmm. And if they did say it and you don't understand why and it's still true, Maybe they're suffering from the curse of knowledge and did not take the time to vulgarize this properly for you to get it. Just saying once again. Mm. So, so Alyssa, you said, okay, this is one of my problems. Catherine, have there been times in your life where you're like, why did I even care this person was saying this? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm, I think it's especially a challenge for those of us that work in DevRel. There's a feeling of like, wanting to to have that kind of approval or to gain that approval yourself or to feel like by sitting at the right table or being with the right names it's some kind of it's a sign that we've done something correct um i don't think that's and the case but it's easy to get stuck into it <laughs> i i have a strong suspicion i have autism but it's hard to get it diagnosed at my age and with my gender but but it is something that accidentally happens to me. You would not believe the amount of times I have been like interviewed without noticing by people because I was at the right table. And they were like, you'd be amazing as a dev. I'm like, you know, I don't go, right? Like I'm seated with the right people. But, like I can fake my way through a junior developer interview, maybe at best. And that's it. Like, please. And once again, authority bias. If you know the right people, with you're with the right people, they don't even check. It's 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 intense. So it happens. Mm. You have two witnesses here on top of me talking about this. Please. Oh, now I've been declared an authority. Okay. Well. <laughs> no chat. Chat's going to chat. Yeah. Cool. So I actually exclusively with the intention of stirring the pot. <laughs> I, I think we, we would get along. <laughs> so another one is, like I said, the mere exposure effect. We have the illusion. If we keep seeing something that's oh, easy yeah. to understand and retain, we go for it. But the mere exposure is that it doesn't even have to sound easy or good. The more we see something, the more we come to like it and trust it. So for example, uh, could you explain the phenomenon of Bob Ross to non-Americans? <laughs> huh? Oh, Bob. Bob Ross, the painter. Yeah, the TV what's, why is it a phenomenon? 
Well, merely getting exposed over and over and over again to Bob Ross references, to Bob Ross's shows, if you were older and child or somehow have a late night habit of TV. <laughs> See? See? Happy, Happy treaties. treaties. So, can you explain the phenomenon that is Bob Ross? How did Bob Ross become Bob Ross the icon? Oh, you're saying it has nothing to do with his pure amazingness? It's not based on... Well, it had to do with when a show was on, right? It wasn't it when, it when it got into syndication, it was on late at night, and people would watch it, it was very vibey. <laughs> yes, that's pretty much it. And, and his perm, <laughs> he did not naturally have curls, but they kept it for the branding, and he hated having to perm that. his hair. He did! <laughs> <laughs> I am getting I'm back on track, but... The more we see something, the more we come to like it and trust it. So there's some things that originally you're not that much into it. Mm -hmm. And then the radio starts playing. So that's the whole concept of payola. That's another rabbit hole if you want to go down that route. Where artists have to pay to get exposure. And the mere exposure means that, hey, the more we see it, the more we come on to like it, the more we come... I wouldn't say trusted, for example, with the example I have in mind. Um, one of the songs I deeply suspect was due to mere exposure is the WAP song. Because I listened to it and I was like, it's not even an earworm. It doesn't even get stuck in my head. I wonder what <laughs> the premise is. Like, I mean, I admire that it exists. It's a piece of pop culture. But I strongly suspect that the more you hear that song, the more you're like, okay, I'm, I'm starting to get it. Maybe. And ta-da. So there's some songs that are fly by where you're like big thing it's a big and then when a lot of advertising, right? Is how often can you get your logo in front of someone's eyes? And even mm -hmm. if you don't say anything positive or negative about the product, it just becomes a recognition thing. When you're in the store, when you're thinking about, you know, I'm hungry, if you think about the logo that you've seen a thousand times, then it it's there at the top and of your mind. <laughs> and I see one of the comments that many people didn't know about Bob Ross until he became a meme. Yeah, mere exposure effect. The fact that you keep seeing this man talking about happy trees, the more like, okay, I, I like Bob Ross. Everybody likes Bob Ross. Let's let me jump on the bandwagon as well. <laughs> so um I see that Angular is still going strong in the comments. So Alyssa, you have your work cut out for you. <laughs> you, will, you will be using a few of these biases to get people over on your side. And yeah. So we have another one, the fundamental attribution error. And did you notice how they kind of like flow into one another? And you're always like, hmm, that sounds like I'm having to deal with a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. Yeah, our brains are full of these biases and they're like, hey, remix, let's go. So <laughs> you may be trying to figure out why this is happening. It's not as easy as you think. So the fundamental attribution error is when other people make mistakes, we often attribute their mistakes to their character. It's their fault. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So once again, if you're poor, you kind of deserve it. It's kind of your fault. But when we make mistakes, we attribute our mistakes to our situation. So you understand, I was drunk, Sephora was open in my browser, <laughs> and it happened. So the reason why I say this is that coming from the e-commerce end of things, we notice for some of my clients, like Friday night drunk ordering is a real thing and it makes money. <laughs> okay. I'm serious. Oh, that's funny. So I believe it. <laughs> uh, it, it's another rabbit hole. Everybody can go down to like figure out people's buying patterns because ooh, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> I don't know who ordered all this. I'm I'm Damn worried. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's my husband. He loves swords. I'm like, where are you gonna put this? Where are you gonna put this? And he's like, anywhere, honey. And I'm like, no, false. <laughs> um, I would highly recommend starting a YouTube channel because at least it will be hilarious and create that's memories. True. Then that's true. Mm -hmm. What what can you chop down with that sword? Uh, start with the pineapple, maybe, and then have people yeah. vote on the right. So. That, like, <laughs> no. Yeah, no Poor go ahead. I'm still laughing at the sword. Now, is it what's the um what's the like XKCP comic that talks about the the bell curve for developers? Someone will jump in in the comments because they will know what I'm talking the about. The bell curve for where, developers. Yeah. What's on the curve? There's like a principle, right? Where it's like the more you drink, the better it gets until you cross a crucial point, and then yep. it's a yep. steep. 
Yep. <laughs> I think that could be said for like tiredness I, too, right? Like. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm still stuck on pretty sure developers being given an unlimited supply of alcohol. It's how we ended up with Windows Vista. Windows Vista, yeah. Yeah, I know. And, and there's a. What is it? I, I'll find it. I w I will say this about Windows Vista. I have seen this at a developer conference. There was a meme going around like, I want you to, uh, uh, what was it? It was like during Fifty Shades of Grey. It was like, hurt me, humiliate me, make me install Windows Vista. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. It's called I, the Balmer Peak. That's what I was trying to think of. Oh, Steve <laughs> Balmer. Yes. Exactly. Because if developers, it, developers, uh, developers. Yes. I love that quote so much. But yeah, no, uh, he holds that imbibing alcohol improves cognitive ability up to a point, right? So there's a there's a point at which some amount of drink will help you be a better developer. Too much drink, once you cross the peak, that's when you get Vista. <laughs> so I, I would like to say thing. if you are confused here and all the cognitive biases are blending into one another, um, I sincerely believe people learn when they're having fun. So <laughs> if maybe the balance of fun was a bit too much, do not hesitate to give feedback. Otherwise, <laughs> we can move on to kind of the end of this. If you want to know more about cognitive biases, um, there's a few people I would uh, suggest to check. So. Um, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this Americanly, so Robert <laughs> Zajonc. So, Catherine, can you take over and Americanize it? Oh, I probably not. It's certainly Robert Zajonc. I don't. That would be okay. my best. No, that, that's th this one is an American name. So, Alyssa, the next one. <laughs> oh, you want Alyssa to do it? Okay, Paul Lazarsfeld. <laughs> Yay! Well done. <laughs> And um, <laughs> Irving Goffman. So, have they all discussed cognitive biases um, right off the bat? No. Uh, but if you want to know more about how humans interact and thinks, think about this, I would genuinely recommend you check them out because Lazarsfeld was really worried after propaganda, and I'll get to this question in a second. After propaganda happened during World War II, we were like, okay, we, we have to become immune to this. How does it work? How did people suffer from this? And we learned this lesson once again here today. We're dealing with a new type of propaganda and bot farms. So I highly recommend you check out the macro sociology, like how does this happen at large, at scale? And then Irving Goffman was known to study micro interactions, like how does it happen day to day? How do you act in regards to someone else? And his theory was that the world is a theater. So when you invite people in your house, where do couples go and argue? Honey, I'm going to need your help in the kitchen because that's the backstage. <laughs> that's where you get to argue. So if you want to know how humans work beyond this conversation, check them out or ask ChatGPT to summarize their findings. Like, I don't care at this point. <laughs> and then double check with me or someone else. But get started. I also saw that there was a question from Lily saying, hey, what was the name of the card game for biases? So um, I'm going to say it again. So this is two um, uh, UX researchers that they're kind of a big deal in their own little world or at large. Um, one of them is Stef I don't pronounce this in English well enough. So Stephanie uh, Walter. So please, Alyssa, go for that one. Yeah. So I found actually Stephanie Walter. Her, uh, this is the one. I think this is like, at least it links to it, um, the 52. Yes. So you have to email her to ask for it because there's been a few things that happened to her because once again, if you're a woman in tech, your work has a tendency to either be stolen, appropriated, or etc. So she had to put a gate on the content. But I know there will be a new edition coming soon as well. They are really fun. You can actually print them out and like play them with your team. So I highly recommend it. And um, I see, I was worried that AI would take over the chat GPT not worry and send chat, chat GPT my credit. That is a person in India, my man. That, uh, that is not chat GPT. The way to send money to your new overlord is by going on the bottom left and clicking upgrade. Yeah. So, um, 
Be honest. Like, you don't have to respond to all this. <laughs> I promise. So, and beyond this, I do find it this tool interesting from the standpoint that it it we can see some of the cognitive biases baked into the tool. They're mm -hmm. paying people to correct it, but I I found some things where I was like, can you make me a joke? about my field, search engine optimization. And it was like, search engine optimization is like the mind of a woman. I'm like, abort, regenerate. <laughs> and it was like, search engine optimization is like a woman's pregnant, abort, regenerate. And after the third time, I was like, you know what, I'm done. You're not funny, but you are, you're showcasing what you learned from humans, like at scale, this is a bit sad. So there's some really good sides where you're like, ah, oh, this, this is clickbaity. I like this. I could have never created this. And there are some sides where you're like, huh, you confirm why I have no faith in humanity. Thank you. <laughs> so keep in mind when we say like, we bake our biases into the code, we bake our biases into everything that we create. It's absolutely true. And I think that this is the end of my wonderful little presentation. You can see I'm not a designer. I just really like intense things. So <laughs> if anyone has questions about this, now's the right time. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to hit you with a question while Chad considers whether they have any questions. So um, on that note of talking about bias getting like baked into things that we create kind of unintentionally, do you have any suggestions for teams that might be looking to implement kind of bias checks or some kind of way to try and like counteract that bias in their work? What can we do? So you have to consider where biases could come from. So look around the team and figure out already what would be some things that we have. Like, is it just me near it? Is it just people from one specific culture? Is it people with the same point of view? So figure this out just to figure out what your blind spots could be. Okay, first start. Second is talk to somebody who does UX for a living or maybe hire someone. I don't know. Or you know what? Run your own user test. And when I say run your own user test, that doesn't mean looking over the shoulder of someone and telling them what to do with the app and telling them they haven't understood right. it. Okay? No. Watching recordings of people failing to use your tool properly is the best school like it will humble you <laughs> and if you deal for me for example it's a very personal thing but i have adhd like some mm. of the forms that i see online i can't even fill out i'm sorry i tap out like i'm done i know i could get an extra training certification and i wrote them and i was like i cannot fill this form out i know you want me i know i should be there but i i'm not doing this i love myself <laughs> too much to do this so <laughs> Ask yourself, okay, who's going to be using this? What What is going to be their reality? So, sorry if I'm going on a tangent again, but no, I've worked on websites. Okay. <laughs> I've, I've, I've gone to audit certain apps and I'm like, this is none of my business, but I try to use the app in situation. Like, you're expecting yeah. me to be out there in the Quebec mountains to load your website. And it has like a chat bought a system thing and he has like this weather app that's supposed to load and all none of that loads when i'm up there <laughs> so i just want the information but you're busy like pleasing yourself as a developer because you connected this to your api and you're excited to test it out and the chatbot is cool but is broken and doesn't load and like no no thank you i can't use it <laughs> yet so yeah. i will very often be the person to go how does the person feel? How do, what does it look like? And I'm not a pro. I just care about what we're doing. I'm always asking myself, why are we doing this? So mm -hmm. if at any point your team cannot answer the question, why are we doing this? Or why are we adding this thing? Like, what will it add to what yeah. we're building? Mm -hmm. You have a problem. Oh, yeah, but the VP asked. Yeah, the VP will ask for a lot of things. Okay. It happens. <laughs> so you need to consider these elements but beyond that there's accessibility checkpoints that are super easy mm -hmm. is everyone speaking english at the same level is it easy to understand do i need some special knowledge what's going on so i'm there is no silver bullet 
but you should create a checklist of, hey, we need to regularly check into this Mm -hmm. and see how it works. And teams that do it well run into a problem. They're like, oh, well, we're going to do the post-it thing again. So if you've already done the work and like put up post-its to figure this out, maybe it's time to do something else or in another way. But if mm-hmm. you have no, like Alyssa, I see it in your eyes. You're like, post-its, what's going on? So very often, like people will put the features of whatever they're building and tr- ask people to prioritize it. Mm. Put that darn thing, like the whole post-it setup next to the coffee machine. You will get feedback from other humans. <laughs> so they're not necessarily your key users, but this already helps you. It's like one easy move. Yeah. Take the board and take it to the coffee machine. And this helps, but simply writing down the features and trying to figure out what they're supposed to do and prioritize them, you'll see that you have a lot of overlap and that maybe you're spending your time in the wrong spots. Mm. Mm -hmm. I see the woe still going, sorry. Oh no, no, no. no. I think he means the stream as a whole. I don't think Napalm realized we were going to be streaming for like five hours straight today. All day? (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, we're still going and we're not done. (laughs) You can't stop us. So, yeah, no, that's so, almost certainly a statement about uh, Alyssa and I. Running the stream as a whole, not you, darling. Not line. you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I, hashtag all day. We, <laughs> we would like to thank our sponsors, Caffeine, Hope, mm-hmm. and Spite. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so, um, do you have other questions for me? Mm. I don't think I do. I haven't seen any in the chat. So my final question that I'm asking everyone is uh, if folks want to find you, if they want to hear more of what you have to say, if they want to work with you, this is the best place for them to find you. <laughs> um, so if you want to work with me, you would probably either need to go on LinkedIn or so with my name, Miriam Gessier. You do not need to pronounce my name this way. Don't worry. Like, I will settle for any attempt. As long as you don't call me Jessica, I'm good. Um, (laughs) This happens a lot more than I would like. Um, If you would like to know more about what I do overall, you can go to pragmat.co. So P-R... Pragmatic cut into, but nobody can ever pronounce it. So (laughs) pragm.co, not .com. And if you like me as a human being and want an unfiltered look into whatever my brain is going to burp up, I would highly recommend Twitter. So I do not condone the platform due to recent events, but I'm still on there. And um, I think my latest tweet was, my husband washed uh, his toothbrush, ask me anything. So, I mean, it's a very (laughs) different level. You will learn things about bots and people, but also get this. There's no professional (laughs) interface. (laughs) <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Well, on that note, thank you so much for coming on. Folks seem to really enjoy it. We got several comments that I don't think I popped up, but were there that talking about how great this was. Yep, this is an eye-opening talk. Thank you for sharing your expertise. Oh. We are so glad that you came on and shared your time and energy with us. So I have one last question. So Angular, how are you doing? Are you comfortable? <laughs> what is your favorite stack? <laughs> uh, yeah, Angular will always. I the mere exposure thing. Someone called me out. They're like, I think Alyssa loves Angular because of mere exposure. Obviously, <laughs> and yes, I still will always love it. So yeah. <laughs> Before I leave you, there's one last thing that you can do to fight the mere exposure effect oh, when you deal what? with developers. Yeah, yeah. I come in and I ask developers, "Are we using this tech stack because?" the client needs it or because you want to have fun and you want to learn something new. <laughs> that and I s- right away, I see in the facial expressions, I can already judge if the project is going to go well or not, because if it shows that they're feeling guilty because they know it's just for fun, it's <laughs> not going to be maintained. Uh, it's not. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> with- Without further ado, I bid you adieu, mesdames. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. (laughs) (laughs) That was great.